Hello, this is Shadow of the Moon, and today I'm going to be doing a continuation of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series of my Harpy Lady deck profile. This is going to be the next installment is Dark Crisis, and the series and set came out in December of 2003, so it was the last set of 2003. Uh, the next set that's going to be exceeding this is going to be Invasion of Chaos, which I'm sure all of you are very excited about quite possibly one of the most iconic sets in the original Duel Monsters because of all of the crazy, crazy cards that came out during that set. But I'm not going to knock on this set because this set actually had a lot of really, really cool cards that came out in it. Um, first off, you had the Guardian, the introduction of the Guardian cards. This was a great and kind of like unique strategy. The idea was that you could special summon these guardian cards or you get them out on the field if you had an equip, if you had the equip card uh, already equipped. So what made this interesting was that it didn't just have to be equipped to any of your monsters. It could have been equipped to one of your opponents. And some of them had effects that would allow you to decrease your opponent's monster's attack. And then you could bring out a guardian card and actually just kind of swing over. And this was actually very, very unique. I wish they would have done a little bit more with this after this, but I guess it, it flopped. Uh, not a lot of... Uh, people actually tried to use any of these cards but i actually kind of thought they were really cool you and unique um i just wish they would have done more with them uh the main event though was introduction of the arch fiend archetype uh this was a very very unique archetype to say the least um this actually came at a time where if any of you have ever read the uh original Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, Season Zero is what it's called, um, or watch the anime of it. It was not released in America, and it was a little bit more dark. It was the first series before Season 1, where Yu-Gi and his friends, they're more focused on playing games, not just, you know, the actual card game itself, but it's actually focused on playing different types of games and board games and stuff, and I always found it really, really interesting. I'm actually, I actually went back, and I'm actually re-reading the series. Um, so I thought this was actually going to be an appropriate time because, for one thing, the Archfiend cards had had to do with a lot with dice rolls. So you would pay life points, and then you would roll a six-sided dice, and you would get the effect based off of that. Now, what made that interesting was um, in the series, in the f last four or five episodes or chapters or whatever in the actual manga or in the series, uh, Ryu Bakura kidnaps Yugi and his friends and forces them to play a tabletop game, a uh, Monster World tabletop game. And... That was really, really cool because it kind of went alongside. This set actually kind of went alongside the manga in that aspect. So you got a lot of like dice rolls and stuff. And that's why I think where they drew inspiration from it. And Dark Master's Orc was in this set, which is a very iconic card in the actual set itself. So I always thought that was just a really fun tidbit and just fun fact of information and everything. Also, you had the introduction of... Exodia Necros, which was unique. Uh, I'm not going to say it was the best strategy. If you, you would only ever put one in the, one in an Exodia deck because the idea would be if you were to have all your pieces, or at least if one of the pieces were going to go missing or whatever, go into the graveyard and you weren't able to summon Exodia, you could put all the pieces in there and you could special summon this using contract with the uh, contract with Exodia. Then he would have the effect that he could not be destroyed by spell trap or monster effects, which I think makes him one of the first monsters to actually have that. And he would gain attack power based off the number of pieces times whatever, and it would become like 2,500 or something. So it was really, really, really cool and interesting to see that. Also, you had cards like Shinado, King of the Higher Plane, which was in the uh, set. And it's very iconic ritual monster. It was played in the original anime by Noah, who used spirit monsters, and was just still actually one of my favorites, and just overall very, very really nice artwork, I love the artwork, Shinado's arc and everything, it's just a really, just a really cool card to actually see, and of course this came out with DD Warrior Lady, so this actually had a lot of good stuff in the set, um, I'm not gonna say it's the best, it's successor, the, the booster pack Invasion of Chaos obviously was better, in my opinion, only because it was a lot more memorable and that had a lot more stuff in it. And we all know the reasons why for that. But anyways, I have decided since this is going to be the last few deck profiles or a couple deck profiles that are going to be going around before the actual first ever ban list, um, this and Invasion of Chaos, I decided to go all out. And my deck profile on this one is going to be everything that I can possibly think of as just like a power card. Anything that is just like 
complete destruction and everything I threw in here to make it really interesting. But I really think that you're going to enjoy it. And without any further ado, without me rambling, let's go on and get started on the deck profile. Okay, so first, obviously, you got your three Harpy Ladies. Nothing new or special. This is a st this is basic, always having three in here in the deck. Just like the two copies of Harpy Lady Sisters. This is used with Elegant Egotist to bring this out. It's a 21, 1950 beat stick that with Rising Air Current gets pumped up to 2450. Okay, then two copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. This is going to be a special summon. It's going to allow you to... So I'll just summon this by removing from play one win monster on the field and also can select at the end phase of the turn. can select one monster on your opponent's side of the field and switch its battle position. Then three copies of Flying Common Carry. The easiest way to get out the Harpy Lady cards, um, Harpy Lady, the original one, um, before they came out with Cyber Harpy. This was the only way to really get it out the best way other than with Cyber, uh, with not Cyber, with um, Birdface. Which I am not running Birdface in this deck. Um, the reason being for that is Birdface really wasn't viable and at this time until they banned Sangin and Witch of the Black Forest. Then you needed a Searcher. So, but for right now, Sangin and Witch work perfectly, perfectly well in this deck. Which is why I decided to keep it. Okay, then we have one copy of the Tribe Infecting Virus. Discard a card, destroy all face-up monsters on the field of the chosen type. So you get to choose the type, obviously. Then we have copy of Breaker the Magical Warrior. He destroys spell and traps on the field using the spell counter. One copy of the new DD Warrior Lady. This card was revolutionary because you could ram it into your opponent or they attack it. And the monster that attacked it would either get removed from play by removing this card from play. So it was very, very valuable in the format. And especially with the Invasion of Chaos that would come out next would make it even more powerful because of the Chaos deck and the Goat Control format and everything. Then you had, obviously, one copy of Switch the Black Forest, which is not banned yet, which this can get most of your cards that you need in the deck. And then one copy of Sangin, which also can do the same thing. This, this searches for defense of 1,500 or less. This searches for attack for 1,500 or less. And then we've got one copy of Morphine Jar. This was a really just annoying evil card to be able to discard your entire hand and your opponent's entire hand and draw five new cards. And then Yada Garasu, because since Yada Garasu has not been banned yet, this is still a great and valuable, valuable card, able to be searched through Sangin and Wish of the Black Forest, even though it cannot be special summoned. And as soon as it hit the field, if it attacked your opponent directly, your opponent had to skip their draw phase, which just made it to where they it was completely, completely unplayable. All right, and then two copies of Magician of Faith. This is going to get back your Elgin Agatis or any of your powerful spells that you have. And then lastly, it's going to be one copy of your Sinister Serpent to be able to get this back into your hand. Alright, that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's move on to the spells and traps. So first, obviously, three copies of Rising Air Current. This is going to make your deck more of a powerhouse deck and more of a beatdown and being able to pump up those wind monsters. Garuda the Wind Spirit can go to 21. Flying Comic Carry goes to 19. And then, like I said... Harpy Lady Sisters will go to 2450. And then speaking of which, we've got three copies of Elegant Egotist. This is how you're going to get your Harpy Lady Sisters out on the field, or another Harpy if you so choose. And then we've got the Trinity. So Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed, and Delinquent Duo. This is for your draw power. This is to completely wreck your opponent's hand by discarding up to two cards. So I think every go deck or any deck in the back should actually always run that because of how good it is. All right, and then we've got, for the ridiculous uh, ridiculousness of this, you've got one Raigeki to basically completely destroy all your opponent's monsters on the field. And then you've got Heavy Storm and Harpy's Feather Duster. Now, I do realize back then Harpy's Feather Duster only came out in the video game. And it was very hard to get a hold of, but I thought that I would go ahead and use it. If you have an MST, you can replace this with an MST if you so choose. But MST, this was even better because it basically destroyed all your opponent's back row. And then Heavy Storm just wiped everything on the field. And since this is majority of a spell deck, I don't ever have to worry about that. Okay, then we have one copy of Creature Swap. Like I said in my last video, this is used to take... Give them your Flying Kamikiri, take their monster, and then potentially ram into it for you to get a special summon. 
And then we had one Sorcerer of Villain Light. This will stall your opponent for three turns. One Monster Reborn to be able to bring back any monster that you have or your opponent. And then one Nobleman of Crossout to be able to destroy your fa their opponent's face down monster. That's it for the spells, guys. Let's move on to the traps. So first we have the one Solemn, Solemn Judgment. This will basically negate everything at the cost of half your life points. Ring of Destruction to be able to destroy a monster and do damage equal to their attack. Trench of Tribute to wipe their field. Call of the Haunted to bring back a monster from the graveyard. And then lastly, Mirror Force to be able to destroy everything on your opponent's side of the field. All right. So that's it for the deck profile. Um, I wanted to kind of elaborate more that I know that the last deck profile didn't have a lot of like power cards in there. I was experimenting with it. But with the last two sets coming out right now and everything, I wanted to kind of proceed and like make it a little bit better by showing you pretty much what the deck was capable of. And I actually love the formula of it because it is just ridiculous. <laughs> Some of the cards that are in here um, before they were banned and stuff, just to know that this is what people could have been playing. When I went to tournaments when I was younger, when this format was going around and everything, there weren't really a lot of people playing a lot of these cards, obviously, because Ragyaki was really hard to get a hold of. Harvey's Feather Duster was basically impossible and everything. But this was, like, potentially what people could have been playing if they would have had it, and it just would have ran everything rampant until, obviously, after Invasion of Chaos, when the Envoy of the Beginning and End and Chaos Sorcerer came out, Konami finally decided, hey, we have to do something about this quickly. And it, after a month of that set coming out uh they finally decided to make their first ever ban list all right so i hope you're having a lot of fun this was a lot of fun to make stay tuned for my next video uh, which is going to be invasion of chaos you're going to really look forward to that that was a really an amazing set like i've said before and you guys already know that by now and with that see you guys next time later